I'm Dr. Dan Undersander, Extension Forage and Research Agronomist with the University of Wisconsin, and we're going to talk a little bit today about managing alfalfa for good production of high quality forage. A couple of concepts to keep in mind. The first is, is that uh, we can produce forage of varying qualities, and uh, different uh, animal categories need different qualities of forage. It does cost money to produce higher quality forage, like here in the 150 to 160 relative forage quality, because our yield goes down, so our cost goes up. So we only want to feed the high quality forage to the animals that need it, and animals that don't need such high quality forage, we'd like to produce and feed a little lower quality forage. So you see where we are, basically dairy requires the highest quality, uh, dry cows, whether beef or uh, dairy, uh, require the lowest quality forage. In fact, we don't want to overfeed them. Here's a, an example of the quality requirements of other animals. And what you see is that a nursing mare or a hard-working horse requires, I would say, medium quality forage. But idle horses and those that are pleasure horses, are red ones, ridden once or twice a day, a week rather, uh, are not going to need the quality forage and in fact will tend to get the fat if we feed too high a quality forage to them. So matching the quality is important both, both to the animal we're trying to feed, both in terms of production of the animal, in terms of a cost effectiveness of production, and animal health issue. Now one of the things to keep in mind <clears throat> is that Quality of alfalfa changes rapidly, and particularly on first cutting in the spring, which is our highest yielding and which is usually the one that we're harvesting for dairy, what we see is that the crude protein declines about a quarter of a point a day. The NDF goes up about four-tenths of a point a day, and NDF digestibility goes down about four-tenths of a point a day. This means that we're seeing, on the average, a relative forage quality change of about 3.6 points per day and therefore when the alfalfa is ready to be harvested if we want dairy quality feed we need to have our machinery lined up we need to be ready to go we need to get out in the field so that we're not sacrificing and harvesting lower quality forage than we would want to be feeding to our highest producing animals. The thing to keep in mind is that uh, generally forage quality declines as the plant matures. Uh, it's getting taller, it's getting stemmier, it's getting more lignified. On the other hand, yield goes up. So again, uh, this is where we might cut for dairy quality, but we might cut up here for beef or for sheep or horses. Uh, because we, want, we don't want the high quality and we would like to get more yield from that field. So match the uh, cutting plan to the animal that you're going to be feeding the forage to. Uh, the other thing to keep in mind <clears throat> is as we're harvesting, uh, we put up a lot of haylage in the spring at 60 or 65 percent moisture. Uh, when we put up wet forage, we have relatively low field losses in harvesting, but we can have a higher storage loss if we don't manage that silo properly for packing, for keeping it airtight, etc. On the other hand, if we're making hay and we're not very careful, we're going to have relatively high field losses and uh, then we would have lower losses in storage, assuming that our bales are off the ground and covered. Those bales that are sitting on the ground and uncovered can have 30 or 40 percent loss in the field that they're sitting in while they're waiting to be fed. So it is important in this day and age with hay at a couple hundred dollars a ton that we think about uh, minimizing our losses in either harvest or in storage and there's a number of ways that we can do that but you know there are some farmers that lose 70 percent of the forage that they're harvesting and only feed 25 to 30 percent of it at 200 dollars a ton hay that makes that forage pretty expensive so it is worthwhile to consider how to harvest how to store and how to feed to minimize the losses 
Now, one of the other things, though, that we should think about is we want to go for high yield. <clears throat> and what we've found is that as stands get older, um, they do sometimes thin. We have in the past used the plant density as an indicator, and we've said that with less than six plants per square foot, we should uh, consider plowing down that stand and turning it over. On the other hand, I'd like to point out that you could have six plants like this, and that would be a pretty good yielding stand, or you can have six plants like this, and you probably should have plowed that up a while back. Uh, so it's really not the number of plants that make a difference, it's the number of stems that make a difference. What we're looking at is, is it is the stems that you cut for yield, so the more you have per square foot, the more yield you'll get. And what we have seen is that a stem count of up to about uh, 50 to 55 stems per square foot will give you the uh, maximum yield that you can get given the other conditions that you have of weather and insects and so on. So we're recommending that you do scout fields. Uh, the easiest time is right after it's been mowed, go look at the number of cut ends. And do you generally have 55 cut ends per square foot in the field? If so, it's in an optimum stand density yield for range for high yield. And if it's less than that, you're not going to get high yield off that field no matter what you do. In fact, we oftentimes see weeds and other things come in and then people are inclined to want to put herbicides on the field and uh, the return just isn't there for that. The optimum is to turn stands over. So one of the things we really want to do is go for high yield on these fields. This graph by uh, Greg Blondie shows what happens if we're in a, if we're trying to feed 500 milking cows, um, what you see is that we have a certain amount of forage intake. If our yield is only three and a half tons per acre, it's going to take 500 acres to produce enough forage to feed those cows. If on the other hand we can get up into the five or six ton range, we can cut the acreage that we need to feed those cows almost in half. So high yield means that it takes fewer acres to feed our cows. Uh, there are several things that we can do to uh, look at the potential for uh, yield and winter survival, uh, which is one of the key issues. And generally, one of the things I want to point out here is that older stands are less likely to survive the winter. They're more likely to show thinning. So not only are they low yielding, but they tend to have less winter survival ability. We are generally suggesting that for most stands, we should think about keeping it with, for the seeding year plus two more, and after that, stands on the average tend to thin, and uh, the most uh, economic thing is to turn those stands over and reseed new stands. Now, I said on the average three years, and by using the stem density I was showing you, if at three years you have 55 stems per square foot, then you might want to keep it another year. But as soon as that stand starts to fall below 55 stems per square foot, it should be turned over. The other thing that we should think about then is that there is actually value to turning over those fields. We tend to think of it as a cost of seeding the alfalfa, but in fact, if we plow down an alfalfa field, we receive benefits that more than cover the cost of seeding. Uh, we get legume credits for the next crop. Uh, we break insect and disease cycles. We improve soil condition versus uh, corn and soybean rotation. We increase the yield of other crops in there. We reduce erosion, and this can help us with weed control and then, of course, uh, improve our economic return. So one of the things we look at is legume credits. And what you'll see is that for stands that are less than eight inches tall when they're plowed down on a medium defined soil, we can expect 150 pounds of N for the next crop if we had at least four plants per square foot. Now, that's enough nitrogen to grow a crop of corn for either silage or grain. You see in this data from Minnesota that whether they put on zero or up to 160 pounds of N, they had no difference in silage yield from 9.77 to 9.88. They had no difference in grain yield from 228 to 229 bushels. So plowing down a crop of alfalfa 
will provide enough nitrogen for the next crop. In addition, though, we also see what we call a rotational benefit in that corn following alfalfa yields more than corn following yield. Uh, alfa, corn following alfalfa yields more than corn following corn. And here you see in this study, uh, we had a corn on corn, and then we had corn following just one or two years of alfalfa, and we got about a 20% yield increase. Crops grown side by side, all treatments the same, in this case all fertilized, so this was not a nitrogen effect, um, but there is a rotational benefit. And we see rotational benefit to wheat following alfalfa versus wheat following wheat and numerous other crops. So having alfalfa in a rotation gives us legume credits when we plow it down and it improves the yield of the next crop. In the case of corn, we see about a 20% yield increase on the average. Now, <clears throat> a couple of things to think about if you're turning over your stand though is how fast then can you come back to alfalfa? And I'll say right now, and we'll come back to this again, but our recommendation is on our medium to heavy soils that we wait two years after plowing down alfalfa to reseed. On sands, we can come back in one year. Here's an example of some studies uh, that were done a few years back where they planted alfalfa no-till, either uh, killing the alfalfa in the spring and seeding immediately, and you see that they did have uh, fewer plants, or they waited two weeks or four, or they did a fall kill in a spring seeding, or they planted corn for a year and then seeded the, uh, the alfalfa. And what you see is that uh, we can get germination of alfalfa seeding back as early as two weeks after uh, killing our alfalfa in most cases. It didn't make too much difference whether it was no-till or conventional. On the other hand, though, if we look at the yield of alfalfa in the following years, um, <clears throat> obviously seeding back immediately gave us both the poorest stand and the lowest yield. But where we seeded back, where we seeded back, uh, two weeks later, we got a good stand, but we didn't get the growth in the yield. And uh, where we seeded four weeks, we didn't get as much yield. Where we fall killed and seeded the next spring, in no case did we get as much yield as if we waited at least one year to reseed. Now what we see is that there is a zone of influence around plants. Uh, that When you have an alfalfa plant growing, that um, it, within eight inches, we get low survival and poor germination. As we get further out, uh, 16 inches or so, we will have germination but reduced yield. And the reason that it, this is a persistent effect for the life of the stand is that the plants grow differently. So here's alfalfa planted two weeks after killing the alfalfa versus alfalfa planted 18 months after killing the alfalfa. You can see here we have a nice top growth. We have good root growth. Here we did not get the tap root. Here we did not get as much top growth and that's why the yield is reduced if we come back too fast. So again, <clears throat> uh, in the most worst cases, autotoxicity will reduce germination. But normally after two weeks we don't see a germination response. On the other hand, if we plant alfalfa back for within one year, we will see a yield reduction for the life of the stand. And actually on our medium soils, we see a, for two years, we'll see a reduction in yield. The effect is most severe on light soils. In other words, <clears throat> just like a herbicide residue, it's most toxic shortly after application but it is most prolonged on the heavier soils. And this is why on sands I said we could come back within a year with no stand or yield effect. On our medium to heavy soils, we would expect if we come back in one year, we'll still see a 10 to 15% yield reduction compared to waiting two years to reseed the alfalfa. And then consider that the area of influence is around 16 inches around uh, the plants. And what uh, this means is that if we have as few as a plant or two per yard, we're going to see a yield reduction in that alfalfa. It is important to recognize that if we have irrigation and or heavy rains, we can in some cases wash the autotoxic factor deeper into the soil, below the establishment zone, 
and then we won't see as much autotoxicity. Uh, so in some irrigated regions we can come back quicker because we will irrigate with uh, several inches of water. We'll wash those uh, metacarpins or those toxic factors down and then get good stand and yield. If we get three or four inches of rain in the spring the same thing can happen to us. So uh, autotoxicity is really just like a herbicide residue. We should consider that all the same characteristics apply and we should treat it the same. Our recommendation is after um, a stand is plowed down that we wait two years on a medium soil, one year on a, a, a lighter soil. Um, we do have a chart in our alfalfa management guide that helps you uh, determine the uh, risk of autotoxicity in the field and you can see it depends on soil type, it depends a little on tillage, but, uh, but there is uh, some risk that you can calculate. And then from that score sheet we would suggest that if there's a low risk seed at uh, four to eight we're going to have some uh, caution and some potential yield loss and then as the score gets higher then yield loss is, is likely high. So our recommendation is to wait one to two years before reseeding if the stand is two or more years old. Uh, that's the other question I oftentimes get. If you've seeded a field in, in the spring, you didn't get a good stand, you can certainly reseed that fall or the next year. We would, um, uh, you didn't get a good stand, it hasn't been there long enough to produce the autotoxic compound. If you are going to reseed, I always recommend though disking to kill what seeds did come up uh, and rather than just trying to interseed because a few plants that did come up will compete against the new seedlings and will cause a ring around each of the established plants that will give you a lesser stand than if you started over. So again, um, all of this information and other material is available on our Team Forage website. Uh, some of this is also available on my website and of course we have our information available in our variety trial uh, test book. <music>